morning, church. Oh, I heard one good morning. That was you, right on. High five from far away. Good morning, church. In unison, it sounds wonderful. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It's good to have everyone here. Happy Father's Day to the fathers. Um, would you all please stand? I'll invite you to go shake someone's hand as we open with a song. It's called Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine.
may be seated. Thank you, ladies. Good morning, church. And happy Father's Day for all our gentlemen. Give them a hand this morning, amen. And happy Father's Day to our, our heavenly father as well, amen. The ultimate dad, amen. <laughs> no matter what. Glad y'all here this morning. God bless each and every one of you on this beautiful day. I'm trying to find my little bulletin here. <laughs> and um, glad you're here. And you know, God is good all the time, isn't he? Amen. And all the time, God is good. <laughs> Amen. All, all the time. Good. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Um, ah, we have a presentation this morning. Yeah, that's yeah come on, ladies. We like to honor our dads this morning. Others are getting ready. <laughs> and... Um, I want to read a little poem to you. It's from an anonymous it's person. It's not butterfly kisses. Or oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm right. Irish. Oh, I can't I take gonna, that. I'll get yours too late. Oh, well, it's too one. late now. Okay, go ahead, girl. Okay. Go ahead, lady. All right. Well, I, I tried to write a poem this morning because I'm broke and I can't buy my daddy no nothing. <laughs> you don't have so that. I can't. I wrote something from the heart, and and uh, hopefully it speaks for the rest of the cash children, not just me. Um, so here's, here's my Father's Day 2013 poem. Um, thank you for my wavy hair and my cash hazel eyes and all the many features that you've passed down to your five. Like all the stomach problems and even my bad teeth. We'll try not to hold it against you when we all get diabetes. <laughs> but such was beyond your control of that I am sure. But I am forever thankful for the parts of you that we can't cure. Like your love for my mama Amen. and the family that you raised. And how it, was your, uh, how it was our example that guides us even today. Like your love for music that you put in us all. From everything to Irish protest songs to the Bee Gees and to our love for rock and roll. <laughs> And like how you do your best no matter what others say and how you let God lead you and he's never led you astray. Now, you are not perfect, but you're close enough to me. Amen. This is just my way to say Happy Father's Day to my one and only dad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was very good. That was beautiful, that echoed all our hearts, didn't it? That echoed my heart in many ways. God bless you. Very funny. <laughs> I can play that one back, that's good. <laughs> well, God bless you, that's beautiful. It echoed all our hearts. Thank you, sweetheart. Well, this time we also would like to um, acknowledge all our dads that's here. And I'm going to ask our ladies to go down to this now. Thank you. <laughs> really, I don't know if I'd actually just look at the photo. And um, I have two gentlemen there that's going to help. They said they would be glad to help, Shorty and Andy. So um, now all the gentlemen, is, is, there's lots of wonderful gentlemen in here. So every gentleman get one of those. So if you're a dad, first raise your hand. We want to see if you have children. We want to acknowledge you. And they're going to bring you just a little token of our affection. Something sweet for our sweeties. <laughs> God bless you. Says my hero, my hero is the quiet type, no marching bands, no media hype, but through my eyes it's plain to see a hero God has sent to me. All of us that have dads, amen? Whether they're good or bad, we still love them, and I thank God for them. So with gentle strength and quiet pride, all self-concern is set aside to reach out to his fellow man and be there with a helping hand. Heroes are a rarity, a blessing to humanity, with all they give and all they do, I'll bet the thing you never knew, my hero has always been you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Amen. All the gentlemen, amen. If all the guys got one. Yeah. We're just going to sing a few for you this morning. We have two. And um, this first one that we're going to sing is, um, we've only performed it a few times, but it was taken from the words of Song of Solomon. And it's called, Hear the Voice of My Beloved. I hope, hope that you enjoy it.
Tell you, if, if you don't think that God blesses marriage, read Song of Solomon. That's right, he does. This song was originally done by the Isaacs, of course. and it's one of his favorites. It's called From the Depths of My Heart. In case you're familiar with this song, you might notice that I'm not Steve Wilson, but I am going to try to fill his shoes today. Hasn't been a bed of roses since I started on my way. And Lord, you know I'm not complaining, but there's just something I should say. For I've reached desperation and I've struggled since. My start, and I've gone weary through the years. Now I'm crying bitter tears from, from the depths of my heart. From the depths of my You 
from the depths of my heart. It's not a prayer just from the lips. It goes much deeper than the words. It's not a worthless expression I just need to be heard for I need to reach your throne I know exactly what I'll have to do I'm gonna fall down on my knees I know you will hear the pleas from the depths of my From the depths of my heart And though I know I'll never deserve you Still I'm trying hard to serve you From the depths of my stand for the reading of God's word this time. Uh, everybody is going to bring that this morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Today's scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12 at the ninth verse. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasures. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. We're going to be looking in uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1 in just a few minutes. But I would like to say, as everybody else has done this morning, Happy Father's Day. Things have really changed since I was a kid. Maybe not for the best. Let me share a little of my childhood with you. It's all a felony now, but it was cool back then. My daddy first took me out shooting when I was four years old. And as soon as I pulled the trigger on that rifle and watched that big old blue mason jar explode, I said, I gotta have me one of these. So he waited till I was really old and mature at 10 and bought me a 12 gauge shotgun for my own. It knocked me down every time I fired it but I never missed. Not for the longest kind of time because I didn't want to have to shoot it again. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then he got me a handgun at the age of 12. Now that would have the counselors come running in to uh, work with all the traumatized children if they heard something like that. I might add that he also let me drive for the first time by myself when I was 12 years old. 
He sat on one side of the, I would have been scared to death. He sat on one side of the truck, and this is a four-speed Grandma Gear 51 Chevrolet pickup truck, and I drove that thing up and down the mountains of Little Piney River, and he trusted me to do that. I got my first car when I was 16 years old, and I went to work for the city of Lynchburg driving a dump truck and operating a chipper machine at the age of 16 years old. Anybody ever seen a chipper machine? One little Miss Lick and you are hamburger helper. I drove a wrecker truck at the age of 16 and I used it to pick these big metal uh, stadium light poles up and crawl up under it and paint it when I was 16 years old. What has happened to America that young men can no longer be men. When somebody has a Pop-Tart in the school that looks like a, a gun and they have to call counselors in because the other children are traumatized. <laughs> Give me a break. You know what I think it is? I think it's because we got some sorry daddies that won't teach their children how to be men no more. Let's just be honest with it. Let's be honest. Because if they did, the administrators of the school would be men too instead of the little punks that they are. Yeah. Acting like they're they all scared every time somebody comes in with something. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's truth. It's truth. We have ruined America with our political correctness and we don't have real daddies to teach their children how to be men and women and act like that. Now everybody's scared to death of their own shadow. Most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1 says the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Nothing pleases a dad more than to see his kids make a wise decision. To do what is right. But to get your children to do that, it's not a, you don't wave a magic wand. You got to be a good father. And let's face it, none of us are perfect fathers, even though many of us may think our dads are. But they're, they're not perfect, but they can be a good father. Now, if you have children, you need to listen to this. And if you plan to have children, you better listen to this. But a good father is one who knows that his children have only one love language. Now, they, they used to, in marriage counseling, we talk about the five love languages between a man and a woman and it's very, very important that men and women learn how to speak the other one's language because they are so different. Uh, never, hardly ever, does a man and a woman speak the same language and I'm not gonna wade into anything that'll get me in hot water at all this morning. But it is difficult unless you understand the language that they speak. And then you speak to them in the language that they understand and you have to do that with children too but fortunately, they only have one love language. You do not have to learn five. They have one, and that language is simply time. Spending time with your kids. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be a crack shot. You don't have to be a road scholar to be a good daddy. You just spend time with your children. That is so very important. The things that your kids will remember when they grow up, it's not the money that you spent on them, but the time that you spent with them and the things you did together. My kids were telling, yeah, it's true. Mine were telling me at the table the other night some of the things that they remembered ever since they were, you know, Andy was in a stroller. Can you picture Andy in a stroller? <laughs> I ought to have one for him now, I think. <laughs> Keep him out of trouble. But really time is important and you don't forget that. My kids can remember stuff when they were tiny that we did together with them. A good dad is one who daughters want to marry somebody like that and some and the sons want to emulate. They will, if you are a good father, that is what they will desire out of life. A good father is one you know who will protect you and defend you. My father was cool before Clint Eastwood came along. I remember one night I got into something and about 12 loads of car, 12 carloads of people came after me. 
came up to the front of my house. I won't live in where I'm at now. Daddy's going to kill me for telling this. And, I, I, and they were all out front running their mouth of this and that. And my father could load a six-round bolt-action shotgun faster than any soldier could. And you know, my daddy don't say nothing. He's quiet. He comes out the door clicking shells in that gun. And some idiot stood up and said, you want to start something? He racked that bolt and he said with the best Clint Eastwood voice, no, but I'll finish it. <laughs> and I have never seen cars peeling rubber out of the front of my house so fast that they never came back again. Now, I've tried to be that way with my kids. My kids know I will defend them and I will take up for them. And if you don't think so, mess with them one time and you will find out. Not only do I carry a Bible, I carry a gun. I'll preach your funeral after I kill you. <laughs> a good father is one that provides you with everything you need, not necessarily everything you want. Do you remember growing up and the things you just were just going to die if you didn't get it? And then you found out you didn't need it after all and it would have got you in a world of trouble? That's a good father when they know you're not supposed to have that and they ignore the whining and the carrying on and they give you what you need. Now, one who, a good father is one who is brave when you are scared. What's that noise, Daddy? You ever hear that? Huh? What's that noise? Well, I only have one child left in my house, and he was dead to the world, and he's as well protected as I am. But about 5 o'clock, about 4.30 this morning, I heard a noise in the house. And it sounded like somebody was trying to yank one of the windows open. Really bad mistake if somebody actually was doing that. So I choose a, a, one of my accoutrements, and I'm walking through the house to see where that noise is at, and the further away I got from my bedroom, the further the noise was gone. And I said, well, wait a minute, that's coming from bedroom. And so I come back in there, Donna, she's dead to the world, and I still hear that yanking. And I finally found out it was that stupid black cat of mine had gotten in the shower and was shaking the shower door thinking it was funny. <laughs> and he looked at me all innocent when I came in there, and it was boom, 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 boom. But dads, you need to go do those things when your children are scared. And even if you are, you can't let them see that. A good father is one who will race you to the emergency room. And, and, and many of you have had all kinds of things there in your life that you needed to get to the emergency room quick. And dad can get you there quicker than the ambulance can. A good father is one who teaches you, particularly you guys, how to treat a woman and for you girls what you should expect from a man. Your children need to see you doing the same thing. And so when they grow up they don't throw themselves at every little thing that comes along both men or women and they will know that what they deserve and that they deserve better. A good father is one who cherished your mother. My kids still say, y'all need to get a room. <laughs> I like that. Praise God if children see a healthy example of a couple that's still in love after nearly 30 years. That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it ought to be. A good father is one who is stronger and taller than you, at least at first. I remember my oldest son, who's way bigger, stronger, and everything than me. At least I think so. I'm scared to test him. Used to lift, when he was living at home, used to lift weights all the time in his room. Had a weight set. and He was getting pretty good. So I figured I'd better make my stand before he surpassed me. And I went in his room one night and I said, how much can you lift there, son? And he showed me. And I said, put 20 more. Or 40, I think it was 40 more on there. And I got there and I yanked that thing up and I got it up in the air and he was like, wow. And when I walked out of the room and shut the door, I was going like it back to the, to, to the living room. But I didn't let him see that. He'd like to kill me. But I got it. I'm not going to try him now because I know I'll be in the hospital. 
A good father is one who taught you how to swim, how to ride a bike, how to throw a ball, how to open a door for a woman. You know, you understand. Those are the, the social graces and, and all that everybody should learn how to do. A good father is one who spanked you when you deserved it. And you're glad that he did, but you never saw how much it broke his heart. You know, we always say it's going to hurt me worse than it hurts you. And I never believed that till I got grown. And it's the truth. It's the truth. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 12, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father the son in whom he delights. To be a good father means that you've got to correct them even when it hurts you to do so. A good father is one who taught you how to drive. I have five of them and my nerves started running out about halfway through so I had to get Donna to help me with that. She ain't scared of anything. She'll get out there and I, you could be all over the road going off a cliff and she'll just be sitting there smiling. She just is calm. I'm all to pieces holding to the dashboard, laying down on the floor. And so the last two, I said, Donna, that's your job, baby. You got you to do that. They did pretty good because they could really drive well. A good father is one who sets curfews. There are, now listen to this young people, there are some hours after which if you are still up, you are up to no good. Tell me what kind of wholesome entertainment are you having at 1 o'clock in the morning? Don't try to smooth that over with me because I've done it too. If you haven't got whatever you've got to get done by a certain hour at night, you're up to no good if you're up that late unless you're an insomniac. And so while mine were coming up, while I had some control, I would give them some curfew hours because I frankly did not like to have to sit up waiting for them to get home. Oh, and parents do that too, by the way. I remember one time coming in about 2 o'clock in the morning when I was, I don't know, late teens, 19, something like that. And I had not left home yet and my mom was still sitting up and I said, what in the world are you doing up? Well, I'm sitting up to make sure you're all right. I said, I'm a grown man. Go to bed. And she said, well, wait till you have kids and you'll feel the same way. And I looked at her and I said, I will never do that. <laughs> and later on, as my kids grew up, I had to go down to the house to see her. And I had to have a plate full of crow and finish it off with a slice of humble pie and apologize because I do understand exactly what she meant by that. Proverbs 4 verse 1 says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. House rules are important, dads. Whether your kids agree with them or not, house rules are important. A lot of parents don't know this. And no child will admit this. But having studied it all my life, a child wants you to set boundaries. They want to know how far they're supposed to go because that provides them with security. And a parent that does whatever, then those children no longer have that security. A good father is also one who didn't make a big deal of the things you thought he would, but did of the things that you know that now matter. Proverbs 15.5 says, A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regards reproof is prudent. A good father is one who stayed up late or got up early just to see you off, to work or to school or to whatever. It is one who answered your questions one after another, after another, after another. And particularly when they're little, it's always, why? Yeah. You better come up with something. I tried to stump mine one time when I was a kid. I wanted to know where earthworms came from. I still don't know. And I minored in biology in college. <laughs> That's a strange, th where'd they come from? And my father looked at me one time. He said, son, they just accumulate. 
that's the only answer I've given anybody either because I must have been absent the week they told me where they came from. Yeah, I've heard that too. Another one, a good father is one who says, oh, come on, mom, let them do it. <laughs> and finally, one that says okay to the kitten that you bring in the house. One who drove you to your first day at school, your first day of college, or your first day at, well, you figure it out, whatever. One who let them dye your hair. One night I was sitting in the house and Andy had dyed his hair white. And Andy said, let me do yours, Dad. I said, what, what the heck? I, I, Mama, what do you think? And she said, I don't care what you do. Next that evening, my hair was solid white. It stayed solid white for months until it started falling out and I had to quit putting that stuff on there. A good father is one that took you on trips. I took my children everywhere. Parents, dads, don't you ever say, we can't go to so-and-so place because we got kids. You're missing out on the best part of life. We took strollers on the mile high swinging bridge at Grandfather Mountain for crying out loud. And you can take your kids, if, it, if it's where you can't take your kids when you're a dad, maybe you ought not go there. Maybe you ought not go there. We took ours everywhere we went. We almost got Candy in as a freebie under five until she read the menu out loud to the waitress and we said, oh, well, you know. Now this is another one and I'm going to be realistic about this. A good father is one who paid for that fine that his child got. Good father is one who is a wreck walking you down the aisle. Oh my Lord in heaven. I thought my daughters were trying to kill me. I had to do two of them in a week. And then another one a year or two later. Dads, I'm going to tell you something. The hardest thing you'll ever do in your life is walking your daughter down that aisle and giving her away to another man to take care of her. I'm going to tell you, I don't care how good of a man he is, it's going to be tough, and you better be braced for that if you have daughters. It's mighty tough. And on top of that, I had to do the wedding. I'm glad that I had two of my children that were ministers that could spot for me and I had Susie Slater up here to help me with one too. That was a real blessing because I would have never made it through there without blubbering like an idiot. But it's tough. A good father, most important of all, is the one who introduced you to the Lord. Let me tell you something, dads, if you don't teach your children about Jesus, you are a loser as a dad. Just the bottom line. I don't care how much money you spend, how much you do this or you do that. You don't tell your children about Jesus and you don't worry about their soul, then there's a problem. And a good dad is one who most of all loved you so much he would have laid down his life for yours in a heartbeat and still would. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 8 says, my son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of your mother. Listen unto your father that begat you, and despise not thy mother when she is old. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth the wise child shall have joy of him. Thy mother and thy father shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. It is a fantastic thing to wake up one morning, and all your kids are not in jail. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful what, that your children are listening and your children are, are okay. They're all right. Listen to your dads. Proverbs 28 says, He that keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shames his father. 
Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, and he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Dads, it is up to you to watch who your children hang with. Be very, very careful who they go out with, who they hang around with, because a good apple doesn't make the bushel of rotten apples get better. It rocks right along with them, and always remember that. Be very Even if they get mad at you, you're saving their life by keeping them away from hanging out with the wrong kind of people. Be very, very careful about that. Psalms 44 says, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work you did in their days in the times of old. Brag on the Lord in front of your children. Let your children hear you tell the things that the Lord has done in your life and other people's life, and they will not forget it. They will not forget it. Psalm 78, 57, it said, But some people turned back and, un and dealt unfaithfully, just like their fathers, and they were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Your children will imitate what you do. Good or bad, you be careful what you say around your children. They are just like those little Furbies. They may not repeat it tonight. They may not repeat it tomorrow, but they will repeat it at the worst possible time in front of the worst possible people. Won't tell you how I know that to be true. Trust me on that. What they see you do, they will do as well. They are watching you like a hawk. And they will imitate you. Oh, I hear a lot of people say, I'll never be like my mom and dad. No, you're going to be exactly like your mom and dad. Don't you be fooled by that either. You're going to turn out like them. Now, my father, like I said, is a man of very few words. But when he says something, you had better listen. It's very profound. Now, I'm getting a little wiser now at as old as I am. But once in a while, my dad would start off a sentence by, What is wrong with you, boy? And what would come after that was totally right, and I hated to hear it. But he'd tell it just like it was. I, I don't get to hear it that often anymore because I don't make quite as many screw-ups that he can see. But one day I was getting after my kids about something, and one of my children stepped back with a funny look on their face and said, Oh my gosh, you sound just like Papa. And I said, No, no I don't. And they said, listen to what you just said. And I repeated my dad verbatim, and so I have now crossed over. So I'm proud of that fact. <laughs> the Bible says that children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. And so let me say this, dads. Be something your children can be proud of. Be something your children can be proud of. And finally, in Proverbs chapter 22... It says, remove not the ancient landmark which your fathers have set. And our fathers that have gone on before us have set landmarks for us to see and for us to follow and for us to be safe and for us to be prosperous in our life. And so I've got some landmarks that I want my children to see. I want when my children are grown, that they can always say that they saw this, and I'll give you just a few of them, and then I'll let you go. But one of them that is most important to me is that I always loved their mother. I've always been in love with Donna back here. I, we still, we're, we go on dates all the time like we're teenagers. We take a little mini honeymoon. That's why we're always broke, but we come back tickled to death we have fun we take we go out every chance we get and spend some time alone because she is so very important to me besides she's the only one that stayed you know you know that's an old joke but they need to see that because when they marry they will have a model that they can imitate or they can follow by what they see their parents do and so they have a chance at making it but if they see us yelling, screaming, hollering, fussing, fighting, 
shooting at each other or whatever, I don't want to get into that, she probably would get me, then they're going to grow up to imitate that. And let me tell you something, if you guys have been raised in something like that, it's time for you to break the cycle and make a change. Don't allow that to perpetuate in your lives. You can make a difference and change that. Another thing I've always wanted my children to see was that I always defended and provided for them. I've always done that to the very best of my ability. Thirdly, that I always tried to teach them right from wrong. What is so important about doing right is doing right when nobody else is looking. That's integrity. And you should always have integrity. I want my children to always see that I always took them to church and served God in front of them. I've taken them every time that the door was open, whatever church we worked in, and then ours, they grew up, many of them grew up in this church right here. And I've always tried to be consistent. I've always tried to be faithful to God's house because I want my children to do the same thing. That's more important to me than anything else. Another one is I want my children to see that I did something <clears throat> with my life that my kids would want to imitate. I would want to be something or do something that would trigger in their mind, I want to be like that. And finally, I would rather be broke and poor and see my children saved and in God's house and serving God than to be the CEO of Microsoft. And I mean that with all my heart. When I see my children here and when I see them doing things that are right and making a stand and, and serving God, that thrills me more than anything on this earth. There is no, That's all the Father's Day present that I need is to see them doing what I taught them how to do. Being a dad is tough. I know it is. I know it is. But it's time that we started teaching our young ones to be men and women and to grow up strong and to grow up faithful to God because, let's face it, the generation underneath me and even underneath them is the only hope that America has got to stay afloat until the Lord comes back. And right now we've got a lot of deadbeat dads that haven't made a stand and they've turned their heads and it's time not to do that. And if you are planning to be a dad, make your stand and say, I, if I become a father, I want to be one that the Lord would be proud of and that my children would be proud of when they grew up. And that is the best Father's Day gift that anyone could have. Shall we bow our heads for prayer.